Fantastic. Good morning, everybody. And thank you so much for that wonderful music, Maddie. Really appreciate it. So good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's amazing event, our celebrating our match class of 2024. I'm Dr. Michael Wong. I'm the Associate Dean for Academic and Career Advising here. It is my true privilege and pleasure to be emceeing today's 2024 Match Day ceremonies. It's a day that we've obviously all been waiting for with bated breath. And finally, at 9 a.m. this morning, we will get to satiate that long-awaited thirst. You've already received your gift bags, and in them it contains that lovely champagne flute to commemorate today's event, and also for you to take home and continue the celebration. Um, more important is that envelope inside, okay? So guard that with your lives, uh, because that tells you uh, the answer to the question that you've been holding on to for so long, where am I going for residency? So uh, please hold on to those and don't open them until 9 o'clock, okay? Uh, so uh, please no peeking, all right? So um, as you can see, uh, on your tables, we have some additional items that you should know about as well. Uh, if you haven't noticed already, you see those match signs. So at 9 o'clock, after you open your envelopes, you can fill that out and go ahead and take a bunch of pictures with that. You can uh, post them to uh, hashtag match2024, and there'll be plenty of other students just like you that are going to be adding their uh, pictures to that. Also, make sure you tag, obviously, our CNU Instagram, okay, because we're going to be also publishing and bragging about how successful you guys uh, were during this uh, 2024 match, okay? Also, if you look around you, you can see that uh, everything's been set up to help memorialize this special day. So on your left and on your right, you can see some photo booths, and we have some amazing photographers that will help take pictures for you to capture this wonderful memory for you, as well as if you need to, they can use your cell phones as well, okay? It's not like uh, going to a cruise and they won't use your cell phone to take a picture for you. All right. So we also have, um, if you've noticed in the back, we have a special station uh, for our alumni association uh, that you'll hear a little bit more about from Dr. Deer, um, who is manning the uh, booth back there. She is our uh, assistant dean of student affairs, and she'll tell you a little bit more about this wonderful organization that we're getting going. We also have in the back uh, two, uh, two military booths uh, from our military family um, who continue to be supportive of our students as well as the entire College of Medicine at all levels. So please uh, stop by and uh, share um, some thanks with them, okay? So and before I forget, I certainly want to thank um, a lot of people uh, because uh, an event like this just doesn't happen out of thin air. And I really want to th give a special thanks to our match day committee who met nearly every week over the last few months uh, to put this event together to make it as nice as it is today. Okay, so I want to uh, please recognize them. And if you could, please stand to be recognized. And I'll just uh, read out the names so I don't miss anybody. I've written them down here. So, so thanks to Stephanie's, Mraz and Hernandez, Robert, Isabella, Ken, Husham, and our Ryans, McClintock and Roca are all on the committee. Thank you guys so much for putting this all together. <laughs> and certainly deep thanks goes to our student uh, representatives to the committee as well, uh, Darcy and Jackie over here. And of course, we can't forget the uh, committee leads, uh, Mia Pham and Dr. Charles Ware. Thank you so much for your leadership. 
And I'd like to thank all the comm staff who really rallied together between, the between our team, the great CHS volunteers, and other student volunteers that have come together to help really support this event. And thank you so much for our facilities and IT um, who make this all possible. Okay, so thank you so much for everything that you're doing to set up our event center and to keep this event rolling as, as it de deserves to be. Okay, so all greatly appreciated. Please again uh, give a great round of applause to everybody on our fantastic <laughs> match day team. And I also want to recognize our faculty, advisors, um, who have come and taught and mentored over the years and guided all of our students to the point of just today of budding medical careers. Um, many of whom are here today, as you can see, um, who want to celebrate uh, this special occasion with all of you. And thanks, of course, to you, our class, match class of 2024. Because without all your hard work uh, in the classroom and on the wards, we wouldn't be here today to celebrate, the, celebrate you. So thank you so much. Congratulations, you guys. And last but not least, uh, a special thanks to your amazing families and friends um, who have loved and supported and encouraged all of you and enabled you to get to this, achieve this amazing milestone together. Because I know that you recognize that without them, you wouldn't be here. So please give it up for your friends and family. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinct pleasure uh, to uh, welcome to the podium our founding president and CEO, uh, Dr. Alvin Chung, for some uh, match day remarks. to thank uh, Dr. Michael Wong for a wonderful introduction and kick off of this uh, fantastic uh, morning. Uh, before I start, I always appreciate music. I'd like to have all of you help me to uh, recognize our pian pianist over there and then uh, make it a wonderful event, uh, add additional festivity and lifting you know, our spirit in this wonderful morning that we get to share the great news of the class of 2024 uh, about their match results. It's really a congratulation day to all of you, uh, the students, the alumni, the faculty, and most important of all, all the wonderful family members, friends that make this a possible uh, venture for all of you that will soon enter into the practice of medicine. I think that you already recognize at the very early time when you decided uh, to become a physician, knowing that medicine is the most noble and prestigious profession that he can enter into. And then you're also recognizing that the members of the community place their trust in your hand of their life and health. So you can see that on one hand, you have the prestigious and nobility in terms of making the commitment and sacrifice to be a physician. But at the same time, you will earn that trust day in and day out. Now you are one big step towards closing that loop, your initial dream, and now you are months away from taking that big step into getting closer to be a physician that you always dream about and think to actualize it. It speaks a lot about your resiliency, 
your commitment. I'm sure that Dean Isaac will mention that to you and remind you that you have gone through the most challenging time in your pursuit of study medicine. And that is when you enter the school within a few months, we were submerged in pandemic. It was difficult, it was scary, but at the same time, it's a test of your ultimate strength and your ultimate resiliency. And all the more, I'd like to personally extend my highest regard towards all of you that who stick it all the way to the end however difficult it is, however scary that is, and now you come to this point today. Well, it gives extreme pleasure that we calling the early time when we are preparing to build this medical school. I would never imagine that I was standing in front of you and tell you, how proud I am of each and every one of you. You are truly, truly make it worthwhile for us to do that. I will save it for a different day, a different time, and kind of tell you how difficult it is to build a medical school. But I also want you to know that your personal perseverance and make it all worthwhile for all of us here to see you and guide you through your advanced learning in medicine. With that, I have one more thing I want to share with you, and that is uh, we have assembled absolutely a fantastic uh, faculty to give you the last piece of information that you need to you need to arm with yourself. And that is within this several weeks we will announce uh, the seminar called the medical and financial practice management seminar. You will not learn in the residency and for that matter you won't hear about it in many different medical schools. But we would like to take the time to offer you a two-hour seminar to guide you through what does it mean to join the medical practice. What are the possible options out there? How do you read a contract? And lastly, how do you stay within bound of all the rules and regulations that you have to navigate for the rest of your career? With that, watch for the news. The members that uh, for that seminar is Dean Isaac talk about the different practices. Myself, I will teach you everything you need to know about finance and financial man management. Knowing the fact that I'm raising $1.6 billion to build a hospital, I think I'm qualified to give a talk on that. And of course, you know, we have our chief counsel who's going to guide you through some of those legal uh, matters that you must pay attention to if you were to seriously maintain your license. With that, I wish all of you a wonderful day. In no time, you'll be reading your envelope. So I don't think I need to tell you good luck because you are all so great. You don't need luck in your life. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chung, for those words of wisdom, encouragement, and congratulations to our well-deserving class. Now it's my pleasure to uh, introduce our next speaker, uh, who is the Dean of the College of Medicine, um, Dr. Richard Isaacs. <laughs> inspiring comments. 
um, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about today and then make a few announcements and then I made some prepared comments. I have about 45 minutes. Jo I'm just kidding, I'm kidding, I know. Uh, I was told we have to open the envelopes at nine o'clock, but I have about 86 slides that I'm gonna go through. Um, no, I realize today's match day. Um, it is an incredible day of hope, excitement, and nervousness. I mean, I feel nervousness. Uh, and I'm sure all of you do too, because you're only about six inches away from that envelope. Um, and it, it brings me back to the day when I matched. And I know exactly what you're going through. I know exactly how it feels. And I'll try to be brief. Um, you, you guys cannot wait to find out where the next chapter is. And we are so excited um, about the performance in this match. And uh, we'll, we'll be talking about that for the rest of the morning. But I want to take you back to 1918. The Spanish flu was the most severe pandemic in that generation. That was over 100 years ago. And during that pandemic, there was so much uncertainty. We didn't know how to contain the disease. Uh, we didn't know that much about influenza. And over the course of a four-year period, 45 projected million people died from that pandemic worldwide. We went over 100 years without that significance of infectious disease. It was middle of March of 2020, and I know this class was getting ready to move into your new dwellings in preparation for the next four years at CNU. What happened in the middle of March? We had a catastrophic pandemic. Uh, it, it actually, we recognized the disease early uh, in the fall of 2019. I know you were uh, probably you know, figuring out where you were gonna be in medical school. But when you got here, the state of California was in a complete lockdown. We didn't know how to secure and keep our population safe. And I've got, I've got pictures, pictures of the highways around Sacramento, completely empty. I remember being in Washington, D.C. around that time, and the Dulles International Airport was completely barren. It was empty. Uh, nobody was flying, nobody was coming in, and nobody was coming out. But this class worked very closely with our faculty to continue the journey of education. We had to be nimble, we had to do things very differently, and this class, unlike any other class, demonstrated the grit and the resilience to be able to persevere. I mean, not only did you persevere in your academic studies, and I know social isolation is a big issue, um, we changed the way that we teach. We were doing remote teaching. Um, and we did it pretty much overnight uh, with the help of technology and um, the, the folks that are, that are here on campus. Um, there were similar parallels to that Spanish flu of 1918. Four cycles, the first one was moderate, and then each successive wave of the pandemic had significant more impact, impact on our hospitals. Uh, it identified where we have opportunities in greater Sacramento. And you were hitting the, the wards as third years um, in the middle of the Omicron um, impact. And that was frightening, frightening for you, frightening for your family members, your loved ones. You had to come home from the wards and you didn't know how to keep people safe. So I wanna thank the class of 2024 for your efforts, for what you've done. California North State University, uh, with the help of Dr. Chung and the community, stepped up to provide vaccinations for the community. Uh, we were providing uh, the, the, the people that were most um, underprivileged were getting vaccinations through here, and we had a major impact on this community, thanks to the students and the faculty. And um, the four years uh, pretty much paralleled what happened in 1918. And I think we're still seeing 
some of the ramifications of a global pandemic. You can see it in the global economy. We're on the brink of uh, potentially a recession. Uh, the federal government has been increasing the interest rate in order to prevent recession. Some of the experts think we, we are not out of the woods with the economic impact of the last four years. And I believe that the pandemic had an impact on all of your interviews. Um, th there is still uh, the sequela of a pandemic across this country, but you guys did exceedingly well, and, and I'm very proud, very, very proud. So I, I want to make a few announcements. Um, Dr. Chung made one of them already, um, because I, this is the first time that we have the whole class with me together. So I want to talk to you, uh, you know, I wanna, first of all, I want a lot of thank yous. I want to talk about the most recent limited survey that we had from the LCME, just two sentences. Um, just highlight the financial educational evening that Dr. Chung and I have planned for this class, and then I'll give you a few prepared comments and we'll be done. Does that work? Okay, great. Um, well, first of all, I want to thank everybody who helped make this event possible. Uh, walking into this event center, I feel like I'm in, in a prom room. Um, it ha it's a very um, royal feel. I like the colors. We've got our university colors in this building. Uh, we have many people watching on the streaming video here, so um, beware of that. Thank you, Todd Gallagher and his team. Uh, I want a special thank you to Maria Mia Pham uh, for her leadership in getting this event together. But there are three departments in specific that I'd like to recognize, the Office of Student Affairs, the Office of Academic Counseling, and the Office of Academic Advising. That's uh, Christine Deer, Dr. Christine Deer, Dr. Charles Ware, and Dr. Michael Wong. These folks have done an exemplary job with the class of 2024. Um, at every step, and it'll show when you open your envelopes and you see how well this class did in, in the match. I also want to thank Ken Enad and his team, Ryan McClintock, and, um, uh, oh my gosh, uh, <laughs> yeah, Isabella, v so Isabella Via Gomez, okay, that's where I was, okay, thank you, Isabella, thank you. Let's give everybody a round of applause, thank you. So real quickly, LCME, it's the Liaison Committee for Medical Education. I was recruited by Dr. Chung to help us get our accreditation across the finish line, and I'm very proud to tell this class we had a limited site visit in October. These are very long processes because the LCME is a governing body that has a board of directors. Uh, we had a limited site visit two days in October. Uh, we didn't hear back from them until January. Um, and they were significantly impressed with the progress that we made. Now the LCME likes to see sustainability of performance. So we have a limited site survey to look at the few remaining opportunities that they identified in October, but I have every confidence that we're gonna get it across the finish line. They're gonna be back here in about nine or 10 months. Their major focus is on, do you have a sustainable process? And we had so much change in such a short time. They wanted to give us the opportunity to demonstrate that we have sustainability. I have every confidence that we have that and we will have good news to share uh, at the beginning of 2025. We'll call you wherever you guys are. Uh, we also wanna prepare you for the future. So as Dr. Chung had mentioned, we are going to bring you to dinner uh, here on campus and we're going to prepare you for what, is it what are you looking for after training? What do you need to know about the practice opportunities that exist in the state of California and across the country? Do you wanna be in a physician-led organization? Do you wanna work for a large health insurance company? Or are there still opportunities for individual practices? We'll talk about all of that. Dr. Chung has tremendous expertise in hospital and health insurance. We'll talk about that and then we'll have Spencer Short talk to us about the legal ramifications of what you're about to em em embark on. So, prepared comments. As I stand here before you, 
I cannot think of, I can think of, I cannot stop thinking about another famous speech made by a president uh, that was in office right around the time of my birth, President John F. Kennedy. He spoke about the power, the power of youth, the importance of courage and the responsibility of service. His words still resonate today, and I see that broadly in the class of 2024. You all are the future of medicine. You will be taking care of me and the entire faculty uh, someday. You will be the ones who bring healing to our community. You comfort suffering and the hope to the desperate. You have been given a tremendous gift, the gift of knowledge and the ability to use that knowledge to help others. But with that gift comes a tremendous responsibility. You will face challenges, you will face setbacks, you will have heartbreaks, but you must remain steadfast in your commitment to your calling. Today, as you learn where you'll be spending the next few years of your medical training, I want to remind you of the words of President Kennedy. He said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. So today I ask you to ask yourselves, what can I do for my patients? What can I do for my colleagues? And what can I do to help the community? and ultimately help the world. As you open your match envelopes in just a few minutes, I want you to feel the weight of this responsibility, but also the joy of the calling of medicine. I want you to celebrate with your friends and your families and um, remember that the real work is only just beginning. You will be challenged but you will also be rewarded beyond measure. Dr. Chung mentioned about the journey that we've been on here at CNU. We have a nidus of training happening here on this campus and across greater Sacramento. We are about to open our seventh college in the fall, the College of Nursing. I want you to remember CNU because when you finish your training, we will be recruiting you to come back to Northern California, where we have this beautiful state-of-the-art facility, unlike anything that I've ever seen before. It's gonna be in North Natomas. We hope to be breaking ground on that uh, at the end of this year, beginning of next year, with a three-year um, build. Right, Dr. Chung? Yep. So three years of building from now pretty much matches your time frame. So <laughs> we're gonna be reaching out to you. Uh, finally, I wanna thank all of the faculty who could not have been more brilliant in bringing you to the stage that you are. We have educational learning objectives that we review with the governing body of the LCME. You are better prepared than most medical students in the country for what you're about to face. You never feel it. You never feel prepared. You're gonna be in a situation where you feel like you're an imposter. You're the doctor. You're gonna be walking across the stage, shaking hands with me and Dr. Chung and getting your diploma, and now you're ready, but you're ready to learn. And it's, it's gonna be super exciting. That graduation ceremony, by the way, is gonna take place on May 18th. With the generous support of the university, we're gonna be in a downtown venue the Sacramento Performing Arts Theater, which is on 12th and K Street. You probably saw your invitations yesterday or you'll get them today. Um, it's gonna be super exciting to celebrate the class of 2024 for everything that you've been through. I wanna say congratulations. You've worked hard and uh, we are incredibly proud of all of your accomplishments. So huge round of applause for the class of 2024. <laughs>
Thank you so much, Dr. Isaac, for that incredible update and the words of challenge and encouragement, as well as a reminder that this class really has true COVID grit and resilience. This is gonna carry you far into the future. So before everyone opens their envelopes, I wanted to put things in perspective by giving you a little context and brag about how well you did in the match. Of, of those seeking residency positions from this class of 2024, 95% secured residency positions for July 2025. 95%. Congratulations. <laughs> Furthermore, considering both our current students and our alumni, we are proud to announce that you guys cover 18 specialties across 68 esteemed institutions. Consistent with California North State College of Medicine's mission, 47.9% of you are going into primary care. That includes 37.5% into internal medicine, 6.3% into family medicine, and 4.2% into pediatrics. It's particularly noteworthy to call out that 59.4% of you and your matches are in California, which is consistent with our goal and our commitment to increasing the number of physicians in California. So, so one of the many things that distinguishes us and separates us as a unique institution is our curriculum, which includes required clerkships in emergency medicine as well as neurology, in addition to the traditional six that encompass primary care with OBGYN, surgery, and psychiatry. So notably, we had 5.2% that matched into EM residencies, and a whopping 13.6% into neurology. And, <laughs> and that includes our child neurology. This clearly surpasses uh, national averages for matches into neurology, and we, we consider this, and uh, affectionately call this the Louis effect. After our, after our beloved uh, former course director, uh, Porsching Liu. So congratulations to all of you. It's uh, incredible. So I also want to highlight some really exceptional placements. 10.4% um, 10 10 of our 2024 cohort secured positions in what we'd consider highly competitive specialties. So these include our matches in neurosurgical, neurological surgery, ophthalmology, otolaryngology and head and neck surgery, and diagnostic and interventional radiology. Even no more noteworthy, I believe this is the first time that we've ever matched a CNU student into neurologic surgery. Finally, many of our students and alumni have been accepted into prestigious institutions and residency programs across the country, including Baylor, Cornell, Dartmouth, Johns Hopkins, and various esteemed institutions up and down California like Loma Linda, USC, and the University of California system, including UCLA, UCSF, UC San Diego, UC Irvine, and UC Davis. This remarkable success is a testament to your hard work, your dedication, your excellence, all of our students, faculty, and staff. Our College of Medicine could not be more proud of these amazing educational achievements. 
and everyone here is to be congratulated. So it is now my pleasure to introduce two amazing women who have worked incredibly well as a team this year, representing your class, and amazingly well these last couple of years as we've spanned clerkships, MSPE, ERAS, interviews, ranking, and this crazy week of soap that has led us finally here to today. Please give it up for your class presidents, Darcy Englehart and Jacqueline Combs. Thank you for that amazing introduction. Um, and thank you everyone for being here. There's so many people here. I just looked up and I saw everyone. That's amazing. Um, Jackie and I just have a few words for everyone um, before we open our envelopes in 11 minutes. Um, so thank you so much for being here bright and early on a Friday. I know some of you were in the parking lot at 650. Um, <laughs> Jackie and I are absolutely thrilled to represent our class and can't help but feel so incredibly proud of everyone here and all they've accomplished. Over the last four years, every person here has grown more than I think any of us expected. We went from timid med skills partners to confident sub interns carrying patients on our own. We went from sitting through Zoom lectures during COVID isolation to performing surgery and delivering babies. We went from discussing hypotheticals in master's colloquium to helping guide conversations and really challenging moments and sharing in the joys and triumphs of recovery. Um, everyone here has overcome a lot to get to this point. We've all had our professional challenges, uh, moments of imposter syndrome, We've faced unexpected life events, and while we have definitely had more than our fair share of downs and more, than, luckily, a lot of ups to go with it, um, the resilience and the determination in this room is palpable, and it has been from day one. Darcy and I are so proud to be a member of this class, a class that is going to be made up of future specialties, including, but not limited, to primary care providers, emergency medicine physicians, surgeons, anesthesiologists, um, and very notably, neurology. Thank you, Dr. Louie, for the Louie effect. <laughs> Our next adventure is nine minutes away. And if you're anything like me, you've spent a lot of time on Zillow <laughs> the last couple of weeks looking at where you would potentially live. So I can't wait to see where everyone goes, and congratulations, and good luck. Talk about cohesion. We're going to go to the next step and talk about our alumni association. And so I wanted to bring up uh, Dr. Christine Deer, who's going to talk about this new uh, group that's going to help continue to foster this great community that's begun and to extend beyond these walls, not only from your class forward, but also those that come after you. Okay, so I'd like to welcome to the podium our assistant dean. Uh, I will not step on this time behind me. I wanted to, first of all, thank everyone for creating this amazing event. Thank you so much, Dr. Ware and Mia Pham, for leading the efforts to creating this beautiful event for everyone. It's an incredible celebration, and I'm really thrilled to be a part of it. 
Com OSA is restarting and growing our alumni association. The purpose of this is to guide you in your transition uh, of your status in the CNU community from students to graduates and alumni. That's all gonna be happening very, very soon. As alumni, we would like to continue to support you uh, by providing you notification of fellowships that may be relevant to your specialties, application materials for those fellowships, and um, mentorship opportunities. We want to grow the network of current students, alumni, faculty, and administrators to make sure we all stay in contact. First and foremost, we wanna know all the amazing things that you're up to, your incredible accomplishments that are surely in the very near future, so we can brag about you to as many people as will talk to us. So please sign up for Alumni Association newsletters. Uh, we have a table in the back with a QR code once we see that you've completed your sign up, we're gonna give you a little bit of swag. So please come back to the back of the room and visit us after you open your envelopes and continue your involvement in the CNU community. Thank you all so much. Good luck in your match. I'm really excited and have a wonderful next step. Thank you. <laughs>
less than a minute, everybody. Get your glasses ready and get ready to open those envelopes. Okay, let's get ready to do our final countdown. Why don't we start at 10? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Congratulations, class of 2024. And for your listening pressure, we have Maddie and Raymond. Thank you so much.
gap. We would love to see where everybody's going to the residencies.
quick announcement. For all those who matched in neurology, including child neurology, we'd like to get a photo of all the neurology matches with Dr. Louie, right over here to the right of the stage.
guys are all having fun and enjoying the amazing matches that you all rightfully deserve. I just wanted to send you a friendly reminder too that before you guys take off, uh, I would encourage you to visit uh, Dr. Deer and the Alumni Association group. We have a QR code that we can scan and get your information so we can keep in touch and you can pick up some CNU swag. So thanks a lot everybody and congratulations. Really appreciate it.